Let's talk about Google Search Console and how you can use it to update content. We're going to go through a couple different things. There are many, many ways to do this, and I won't be able to get through all of them here, but we're going to go through some of like the main ones. So this is my Google Search Console for my site, She Knows SEO. It's not perfect, and I will fully admit that. I have not done a content audit on it, and I definitely need to. <laughs> so we're going to start the beginnings of that together. So in GSC, you'll go to full report over here. If you don't have that, you're just going to go over here to performance search results. The thing with like search results is we want our actual search results on Google. Discover, it's harder to optimize for. I'm still learning Discover. I don't know that anyone fully understands it yet, to be honest. If you know someone who does, please let me know. I would love to learn more about it. Uh, but we're looking at our search results here. So what we want are clicks, impressions, and then position. Position's important. Most of my sites have an average position of closer to like 15 or 16. So clearly this one, I need to do some work. Now I filter by the last three months, largely because things change so quickly. So I'd really rather have a better perspective on kind of overall rankings. If something has been published in the last three months with this technique, I leave it out. Like we're also like, you shouldn't touch things that have just been published anyway, it needs time. It needs to like marinate like a really good steak or something. I don't eat steak, so I don't really know how that works, but I'm told you're supposed to marinate it. So what you can see here is when we scroll down, you'll see the clicks, impressions, and position. Clicks are people clicking through, the impressions are the page views of that search. So anytime someone goes to the page that you appear on, if you're on page, I don't know, 15, you're going to have lower impressions than page one, but you're only going to get the impressions for page 15. That's really important because a lot of people think like, oh, well, then it's only has like 10 impressions for the whole keyword. No, no, no. It's for that page. So I can see immediately here are the posts that are not performing as well as I would like. They're not in position number one. And I want obviously everything to, posi uh, to be position one, but that's not the easiest thing to do. So the first thing is just find stuff that's not position one and try to update it. See how you can make it better. A lot of times it's going to be backlinks for this site. I don't really do any backlink work and I should get on that. Um, just been too busy, but I can see like, okay, this post is number 4.3. This is going to be an average across every location. You can come up to new and you can add country and filter by country if you want. And then you're just going to go through and compare yourself to who's there. See what you can do to fix it up. Another thing you can do is with average CTR, you can see what the click through rate is. So that is essentially uh, clicks divided by impressions. And so we want to have as many people as possible clicking through. A pretty average rate I would say is between one to 2%. Anything like two or more is really, really good. That's because we're always gonna have a ton of nonsense keywords that like we don't actually satisfy the intent for. And also because a lot of people just don't click through and that's fine. But here you can see for the first couple, I mean, they're obviously trying to find my site. So you would expect a higher uh, click through right there. But for some of these ones, like there is the Mediavine requirements. I'm position eight. I mean, probably Mediavine is number one. So you would expect most people are clicking on their post and I'm stuck a little bit lower. But you can also see that I'm just not getting that many clicks. And the number one thing I can see here is I'm not ranking in the top three. So I want to improve this post to bring that up and then get more clicks because the higher you rank on page one, the more clicks you get. It's all kind of relates to each other. And for a lot of these other ones, like I do have a pretty good one, a pretty good click through rate. Sorry, I can't speak today for some of these, but not all. So I would want to go through anything that is under 2%. And if you filter, you can just filter it by that. Now the problem with just filtering anything here, like if you filter position one down, you're going to get a lot of like nonsense that you're ranking for that doesn't actually like relate to your content. So this like SEO coach analytics, I don't even know what that means. I have definitely never written anything related to that. And this site doesn't have that many posts to be honest, but the more posts your site has, and especially if it's in like not an SEO niche, you're going to pick up a ton of random secondary keywords and you're going to be like, okay, why do, like, why do I rank number one for that? I don't care about that. I typically go by clicks first because these are the things that are already the most relevant. And 
if they're already relevant, we want to optimize them as much as we can to make them even more relevant. Now, another thing that you can do is when you come to date last three months, you can compare it to the three months before. And you can do three or six months depending on how you're doing a content audit. But this is really cool because you can see, okay, is it getting more clicks or less clicks? It's very confusing the way it's worded though. Clicks in the last three months is like the most recent three months. And then previous three months are the three months after that, like, or I guess before, before that. So let's say like right now it's June. So it would be June, May, April, and then March, February, January would be the previous, if that makes sense. Now it's going to give you a difference. I'm actually going to turn off CTR for this because it doesn't matter quite as much right now. We're mostly going to be looking at uh, position difference here, but you're going to see it gives you a difference. And that's going to be subtracting um, the old or pardon me, subtracting the old from the new. And the problem is it glitches a lot. So you can see, okay, this went down, that makes sense. This went down, that makes sense. Sometimes though, it'll go down, but then it's positive. So you have to manually look at this. And I've seen a lot of people saying like, oh, it's just, I don't know, like the, uh, people like say they don't understand why it is. It's always been like this. Like Google search console has always done this where it, does these differences and they're inaccurate, especially for position. Because the problem is like this one seems to have only gained 7.5. It gained a lot more than that, considering it didn't even exist before that. Or this one here, it says that it uh, like lost rankings technically, but actually it moved up in position. So what do we do with that? We manually look at everything. <laughs> um, it makes the most sense to stop and take a look at it. So if I'm ranking in the position five, it accidentally kind of does the reverse and it says, oh, you lost it. If you look, you obviously know that's not the case. Just manually check this. That is the easiest way to do it. Don't filter by position difference because you're going to get a lot of nonsense and we don't want to do that. This is again why I'm still filtering by clicks because I want to work on the best things first. So if something is doing like getting me a decent amount of clicks and I've also I've lost rankings on it, I want to improve that immediately. And so I want to look at those things first. Now, this does mean that you're not going to be able to like just auto create a list that's perfect. Who cares? I would rather put time and effort into this to make sure I'm doing a content audit properly. You don't want to, I don't know, try to gamify things too much or whatever. Content audits should be done thoroughly. And that means that they take time and that you have to manually review stuff. And that's okay. Like it's really good to manually review stuff. <laughs> you could export this to um, an Excel file and then you could do things like filtering out anything that had zero in the previous month. Cause then you know it just massively grew and then the difference is gonna be a bit diff like a bit off. Um, you can also try to like find your own way to check these numbers. I've yet to find anything that's consistent, as consistent as this, like of just manually looking at it. So yeah, you just go through them manually, find the ones that have actually lost rankings, not the ones that have gained. Uh, let's try to find one. I haven't done much on this site recently. Here's one. Okay. So this one, you can see it looks like it went up in position, but technically positives are bad here. So I've actually gone from 5.2 to 7.4. The points are because like it's an amalgamation. So it is an average across different areas. Typically when it's point something as well, it's often getting put into a different feature. So like site links, FAQs, um, maybe a snippet, not usually snippets, but maybe uh, an image pack or something. And so this is my, okay, this isn't even like post on my site. This is people just trying to find my travel blog. <laughs> um, so I lost rankings for that because this isn't a travel blog. So it makes sense. So I'm like, okay, cool. We'll leave it at that. Maybe I need to make a page called Nina Clapperton travel blog at this point because everyone searches it, which is very funny to me. Um, okay. Let's try to find another one. So we got 39 to 40. Da, da, da. The site's doing better than I thought, to be honest, for something that I have not really engaged with in a while. Okay, come on. At this point, it's getting ridiculous. I would like to see something where things are going poorly. 
here we go. Okay, 12.3. That's a pretty significant change. Okay, this is an actual post I have, chat GPT versus Jasper. And this is one I actually know needs updating because I wrote it like, I think in December or something, like it's a very, it's old now. And considering how much AI has changed, Jasper and ChatGPT, like Jasper used to be so much better than it. Now I think, I think they're both really good at different things, I will say. Um, but here I can see that I've lost a lot of rankings. And I do think that's because I have not updated this post. So it, it was also an email to be honest, to begin with. So I never really probably properly turned it into a post. It ranked number three initially because no one else had anything on it, but those days are over. So what I can see here is like I've clearly lost rankings. Um, I can also come over and see that like I, oddly I've gotten more clicks. That's interesting. I think that's because I put it in an email though. Um, and I can see the impressions for the keyword have gone up. So that means more people are searching for it. So it does make sense that it's more competitive now. And that means I probably want to fix this. Now, again, this is the impressions for the page I'm on. This is not the impressions for page one. So I want to get it to page one because I know if on page three or four where I'm at now, it has this many impressions, it's going to have even more on page one. So yeah, that's one of the ways you can use this. Um, in Google Analytics, I would also tie this to Google Analytics and then check and compare the uh, traffic there as well. What a lot of people do is they just use Google Analytics and just see, okay, did I lose traffic? But that doesn't take into account ranking changes and ranking can change for so many reasons. Like, And th the bigger issue is when there's a ranking change, traffic change, can just be seasonal content, especially in the travel niche. Like I have so many things that like for three months will be bringing in like a thousand page views. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, here's 10 page views. And it's cause it's about winter and like winter in Canada stops at a certain point. So like no one's searching it and that's okay. So this is where you can just go over and double check if, the, if there was a traffic drop, was there also a rankings drop? I do not intervene unless there is a rankings drop because I can usually tell it's seasonal content to be honest. So yeah, use Google search console. It is hundred percent free to you. It's going to help you like check your rankings in the most accurate way compared to any other tool. The only other thing I think is decently good for this and it gives you a seven day perspective. So it's not nearly as good is the free Ahrefs webmaster tools. That anyone can sign up for. I don't think enough people know about this. Maybe I'll make another video on that where you can like check what you've lost, gained, declined and improved on. I, yeah, that was a weird order to do that in, but whatever, um, for keywords in the last seven days. So there you could see, okay, in seven days I've lost something, but like seven days is much more of a microcosm. Like it's better to look at it from a wider perspective, I would say. So yeah, I hope you use this well. Um, content audits are so important. I'm going to link my content audit checklist in the uh, description as well. It is 100% free. It's not really a checklist. It's more of a workbook. So like it goes through my exact processes that I use to, yeah, beef up my site and make sure that content is doing well. And I clearly need to do more work on this, like this site and probably actually post on it more than I do because I, I've been neglecting it <laughs> a lot. So yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you guys have questions about this, please post them in the comments. Um, and just remember that like, I don't know why people like no one seems to talk about this well, or they claim like, oh, it makes no sense. It Something that's always happened is that positives typically actually mean a loss. Negatives typically actually mean a gain. However, they're all skewed because the zeros mess everything up. And it just, and sometimes, honestly, sometimes it just flips for no reason and decides it's not going to be negative today. That is why we manually check things. When in doubt, these are all free tools. You are... Like your brain is much more capacity than a free tool. Um, so use your brain and do it manually. And yeah, I hope that helped and have fun.